Alright, so it looks like Samsung is really shaking things up with the Galaxy S26 series, and honestly, this could be their biggest chipset change in years. So here's what's happening. Samsung is reportedly planning to use its own Exynos chip in most of the Galaxy S26 models around the world. Yeah, that's right, the Exynos 2600 is coming back in a big way. And if you've been following Samsung for a while, you know this is kind of a big deal because for the past few years, Samsung has been mostly relying on Qualcomm's Snapdragon chips for its flagship phones. But this time, Samsung seems confident. They're basically saying, hey, our chip is finally ready to take on Snapdragon. And that's interesting because for a long time, Exynos chips had this not so great reputation. People complained about lower performance, heating issues, and weaker battery life compared to the Snapdragon versions. So hearing that Samsung wants to make Exynos the main ship again, that's bold. Now, according to leaks, the Exynos 2600 will be used in the Galaxy S26 and S26 Plus models, and that'll cover most markets around the world. So if you live in Europe, Africa, or even South Korea, chances are you'll get an Exynos version of the S26. But there are some exceptions. The United States, China, and Japan will still get the Snapdragon version. Why? Probably because those markets are super competitive and Snapdragon ships just have stronger brand trust there. And interestingly, South Korea, Samsung's home country, might even get Exynos-only models. That's a huge vote of confidence from Samsung themselves. So what about the Ultra model? The Galaxy S26 Ultra will reportedly have a split configuration, meaning some regions will get the Snapdragon version, while others might still get Exynos. It's a kind of mixed setup, something Samsung's done before, and it lets them balance between their own chip production and Qualcomm's supply. Now, let's pause here for a second. This whole move really shows how much Samsung believes in their in-house chip team. They've been working hard to close the performance gap with Snapdragon, especially in gaming, AI processing, and battery efficiency. And if the Exynos 2600 really delivers this time, it could change the whole game. Because think about it, if Samsung can make its own chip that performs on the same level or better than Snapdragon, that means more control, lower costs, and less dependence on Qualcomm. Basically, it gives them Apple-level control over their ecosystem. Reports also say that Samsung is scaling up production of the Exynos 2600 to meet high demand, which tells us they're really going all in. It's not just an experiment anymore. They're confident enough to power the majority of their next-gen flagship lineup with their own silicon. Now, of course, there's still a big question. Can Exynos actually compete this time? Because, yeah, the Exynos 2400 from the Galaxy S24 series made big improvements, especially in efficiency and graphics performance, but Snapdragon still had the edge in certain areas like sustained performance and thermals. If the Exynos 2600 can finally match or even beat the upcoming Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, that's going to change how people see Samsung's chips forever. And it could even push other phone makers to think twice about relying so heavily on Qualcomm. But if the Exynos 2600 doesn't deliver, if it still lags behind in real-world performance, then Samsung could face backlash, especially from fans who want the best performance for their money. So yeah, this move is risky, but it's also really exciting. Another thing this shows is Samsung's long-term goal. They clearly want to be more self-reliant. They've been investing a ton into their chip division, especially with their new Galaxy AI features and future 6G and on-device AI plans. Having their own powerful Exynos chip means they can optimize everything perfectly for Galaxy phones, kind of how Apple does with their A-series chips. And it makes sense, right? If Samsung can control both the hardware and the software, they can create a smoother, more efficient experience overall. No more waiting for Qualcomm updates or adjustments, just full control over everything inside the phone. Now, the hybrid setup for the Ultra model is still smart. It gives Samsung flexibility. For example, markets like the US really prefer Snapdragon, and it's great for marketing there. But at the same time, Samsung gets to show off its new Exynos to the rest of the world and prove that it's finally up to par. So yeah, the Galaxy S26 lineup is shaping up to be Samsung's biggest Exynos comeback in years. If this works out, we might see a future where Samsung uses Exynos for all of its flagship phones. No more mixing and matching. 
But the real test will be how the Exynos 2600 performs in real life, not just benchmarks. People will look closely at gaming, battery life, heating, and camera processing. Because no matter what Samsung says, users will always compare it directly with Snapdragon. So yeah, in short, Samsung is betting big on itself this time. The S26 and S26 Plus will be mostly Exynos, while the S26 Ultra will have both Exynos and Snapdragon depending on your region. It's a brave move, and it really shows Samsung's confidence that the Exynos 2600 is ready to go head-to-head -head with Qualcomm's next-gen Snapdragon. If Samsung pulls this off, it'll be a turning point, not just for them, but for the whole Android world. But if they mess it up again, yeah, people won't forget easily. Let's see how this plays out, because this could either be the return of Exynos or the final nail in its coffin. So, what do you think? Would you actually trust an Exynos chip in your next Galaxy phone? Or are you still sticking with Snapdragon?